In this video, we'll learn about diode operation and reverse breakdown. A reminder that the diode's operating characteristic under both reverse bias and forward bias is governed by this exponential relationship shown here. However, the exponential relationship does not govern the diode's behavior on the far left of this plot, that is with large reverse bias voltages applied, large negative voltages, assuming the polarity for V shown here, the diode reverse current begins to increase dramatically and rapidly. There's two different physical phenomena that can give rise to this reverse breakdown. One is avalanche breakdown, whereby the electric field across the diode's depletion region is so large that free carriers are accelerated very rapidly and collisions in the crystalline structure of the semiconductor result in more free carriers being produced, which in turn are accelerated and produce an avalanche effect, resulting in a large reverse current flowing. Avalanche breakdown, with some important exceptions, is often uh, an undesirable phenomenon in circuit behavior. You can imagine that with a large voltage appearing across the diode and large current flowing, you may very quickly lead to high levels of power dissipation in the diode, and diodes can overheat and physically be destroyed under such conditions for when exposed to them for extended periods of time. Another mechanism for reverse breakdown is Zener breakdown. In such cases, the diode is engineered to actually intentionally operate under reverse breakdown and can do so safely for extended periods of time. Diodes engineered in this way are usually called Zener diodes and can be useful for providing relatively constant voltages when a suitable reverse current is pushed through them. Whereas avalanche breakdown typically arises at reverse voltages of say 10 volts or more, Zener breakdown voltages can be engineered to have a wide variety of values. Typical values are lower than 10 volts although higher values are possible too. Here's the schematic symbol for a Zener diode. It looks similar to that of a normal diode, except you'll see the, a small change in the bar across the top of the arrowhead. And that just simply denotes that some reverse current can flow under normal operation. You'll see that the polarity through which Zener current flows is actually, actually corresponds to negative current according to our normal polarity definitions for diodes. Likewise, Zener voltages correspond to negative or reverse bias voltages in our normal diode IV characteristics. So shown here is the IV characteristic of a diode zooming in on the reverse breakdown portion of the plot. Zener diodes have a relatively straight line plot that relates reverse current to reverse voltage applied in Zener breakdown. On this plot, Q identifies a nominal operating point for the Zener diode, where reverse current IZT is flowing and reverse Zener voltage VZT uh, appears. Now for small changes in the reverse voltage around this operating point Q, we expect changes in current to arise. And those changes in voltage and changes in current are related by the slope of this portion of the plot, which has units of one over ohms, and is therefore similar to the IV characteristic of a resistor, except that it's shifted away from the origin around this operating point Q. This is the basis for the model that we'll use for the Zener diode in reverse breakdown. When selecting a Zener diode for use in a particular application, several key specifications should be referred to on the data sheet. Usually shown there is the reverse voltage that will arise at a specified test current. So for example, you may be specified a six volt Zener diode at one milliamp current. So that would specify one point 
on this portion of the curve. Also often specified is the knee current, IZK on this plot, at the onset of Zener operation. So before that level of reverse current, we essentially just see reverse leakage to the diode. But beyond that current, the curve turns more steeply downward and, become, and the reverse voltage becomes relatively constant. Also specified are the maximum power the device can safely dissipate. This can be important because you've got a modest or large reverse voltage across the diode, and you can very quickly see large currents flowing. So a lot of power may be dissipated in the Zener diode, and uh, there's only a safe amount of power that can be dissipated while making sure that the diode doesn't overheat and get destroyed. Finally, the Zener voltage has a temperature coefficient, commonly known as its tempco. That is something expressed in units of millivolts per degree Celsius or Kelvin. It tells us how much the Zener volts sh the voltage shifts to the left or right as temperature changes. Now, if we consider the Zener diode's IV characteristic only under reverse breakdown, that is only under this region, it in fact looks exactly the same as the IV characteristic of this equivalent circuit shown here. That is, it's the series combination of a constant DC voltage source, the value of which can be found by taking the linear portion of this curve and extrapolating it back to the point where the current is zero, VZ zero, in series with a resistance RZ that captures the slope of the IV characteristic under reverse breakdown. Now this is a very useful fact to recognize because we, by taking the Zener diode and replacing it with this subcircuit, as long as we know that the circuit is keeping the diode within this operating region, we can get a very, very accurate estimate of the voltages and currents in the circuit but we need only perform linear circuit analysis because everything in this model is linear component. We've simply got a DC voltage source and a resistor. This is an approach that we'll use time and time again to do analysis and to build intuition with nonlinear devices. We will restrict our area of interest to a specified part of the nonlinear device's operating characteristic. And within that range, we can safely replace the nonlinear device with a combination of linear devices, giving us linear analysis and all the tools that come to bear uh, there, as well as good intuition. We'll use similar approaches for transistors later.